Okay, this is a presentation coming from the Shipboard uh, Pest Management Manual, Chapter 2, the chapter on shipboard pest. The first pest we'll talk about is the German cockroach. We're going to say that the German cockroach is the most commonly encountered pest aboard a Navy ship. Most commonly encountered pest. It's small, flattened. It's a light brown insect that has two longitudinal stripes right behind the head. You'll sometimes refer to it as its lieutenant bars, those two stripes right there behind its head. Um, they spend about 80% of their time in harborage, with the remaining 20% just within a few feet from where they live. Um, shipboard pest control specialists, they got to make sure that they're doing a cockroach survey at least every two weeks in food service areas. And when there is an infestation, they got to do it weekly until that infestation is no longer present. So our pest control specialists, they got to do inspection every two weeks, unless we've got an infestation, an active infestation, then we're going to do it weekly. Um, four factors that are going to support cockroach infestation are going to include food, water, warmth, and harborage, right? They're going to need something to eat, something to drink. They like it a little warm, and they need somewhere to live. Next, let's talk about some ways we actually survey how we investigate to see if we have cockroach infestations. And the first thing we'll talk about are flushing agents. And our flushing agents are going to be aerosolized pesticides that contain synthetic pyrethroids, a common ingredient in most pesticides. But we're using this to actually see if we've got cockroaches in, in an area. We use it to flush them out of where they may be living. So we spray small amounts into potential harborages, all right, and we observe that area for three to five minutes to see if any cockroaches scurry out. And that's how we're using these pyrethroids this is how we're using these flushing agents so we don't want to use it around any bait stations anything we've got set up to um, trap cockroaches to check and see if we're looking for an infestation that way or if we've got anything treated with boric acid to try to kill them uh, we don't want to put any of these pyrethroids next to it because it's got a repellent uh, factor to it and you you'd end up you know, making that bait station useless or that borac, borac that boric acid useless so instead the way we use these is if we got an area where we think they might be living, we'll spray some of that in there and see if they if they come on out. It's for like directly looking for it, not something where you, you set it and wait. Um, when we set it and wait, we use things like cockroach traps. And we've got commercially available glue boards. You know, you set these out in areas where you think you might, you know, where harborages might be a couple feet away from it. Because again, remember, they don't like to go too far from the harborage. Um, and yet you go look at the trap later on. And it's just got a little bit of glue on the bottom and it'll, it'll catch a couple of cockroaches. And usually it's got some sort of attractant in it. Um, or you can make one. You can make your own out of a glass jar and you put some sort of attractant in there, like a piece of bread or a slice of banana. And what you'll do is you'll spread a really thin layer of petroleum jelly on the inside of this lid, right? Make it nice and slippery on the inside so when the, uh, the cockroach goes in there, it can't get out. And we say if you've got two or more cockroaches per trap caught in a 24-hour period, we might have to use pesticides to treat this. It's a pretty significant infestation, okay? So two or more cockroaches per trap in a 24-hour period, pesticide treatment might be necessary. Next, we'll start discussing some stored product pests, and we've got a, quite a few of these guys to get through, but first and foremost, we're going to talk about the medically important stored product pests, and that can be divided between the domestic beetles and your flower beetles. The domestic beetle, that's a whole family of beetles that are going to include the genus Trogoderma and also a specific species called the caffra beetle, and the caffra beetle is uh, internationally quarantinable, so an infestation with caffra beetles can, can result in a ship getting quarantined, uh, but with the domestic beetles, we have no tolerance for these guys whatsoever. And the, and the concern is if, if they're ingested, they're, they're hard on the GI tract. Their larva got these little, little barbs that kind of stick out of them that can cause some pretty significant gastrointestinal distress. So we say that an infestation of one or more living or dead larva, that's a justification for condemnation of the entire lot. We will not tolerate a single domestic beetle. The flower beetles, all right, so we got the red flower beetle and the confused flower beetle. And collectively, we can call those the tribolium beetles. All right, and these guys, we don't like these guys because they turn, they cause flower to turn gray and they secrete benzoquinones and it's got a little bit of a carcinogenic effect in the food that they, that they infest. Um, and so these guys, we've got to get rid of any product when we have three or more larvae or adults per pound, okay? So three or more per pound, that's going to get rid of the lot. And then with everything else, uh, all the other stored product pests we're about to talk about will tolerate um, up to seven, right? So other stored product pests require disposal at seven or more per pound. Three or more for our flower beetles or our tribolium beetles. And then our, any domestic beetle, one of them in the lot's no good. 
Next, let's talk about the sawtooth grain beetle. Right, the sawtooth grain beetle we're going to say is the most common stored product pest aboard a ship. Got to pay attention to these most, right? So the most common pest on a ship we said was the German cockroach. The most common stored product pest is the the uh, sawtooth grain beetle. Um, they infest a wide range of uh, uh, commodities like your grains, your dried fruits, candy, sugared, dried meats, ta tobacco products, but it's the most common stored product pest. The rice weevil, the rice weevil is considered to be the most destructive of the stored product pests. It's going to ruin most of your stuff. And then the Indian mill moth, we're going to say that the Indian mill moth, that's the number one pest of dried fruits in storage. All right, so sawtooth grain beetle, most common stored product pest aboard a ship. Rice weevil, most destructive Indian mill moth, number one pest of dried fruits in storage. So what do we say were the four key factors that support cockroach infestation? Four key factors for cockroach infestation going to include food, water, uh, warmth, and harborage, somewhere to live. Uh, which stored product pest is internationally quarantined? Which of the stored product pests is internationally quarantined? That's our caffra beetle. Uh, what's the most common stored product pest? What is the most common stored product pest? Well, we say that's a sawtooth grain beetle. What stored product pest is considered to be the most destructive? It's that damn rice weevil. Uh, what's the number one pest of dried fruit and storage? What's the number one pest of dried fruit and storage? That's your Indian mill moth. So next we'll talk about some surveillance procedures when it comes to stored product pest. So pure side inspection should be conduct conducted at the time of receipt of any, any kind of foods. Uh, ideally, we'd be able to identify any kind of infestation right there on the pier, and then we wouldn't bring, uh, bring that stuff aboard. Um, if we're replenished at sea, onboard replenishments, those got to be inspected within 48 hours of receipt, okay? 48 hours for onboard replenishments. Medical department personnel, they got to make sure that they're inspecting all storerooms at least monthly, all right? Monthly inspections uh, on your storerooms. And then the items with the probability of infestation with the highest probability are going to include your grits, your cornmeal, farnia, fry mix, macaronis and pastas, your barley, your cake mix, your flour, your dry beans and peas, your cereal, and your spices. These are the guys where you're probably going to find most of the stored product pest, okay? So, pier side inspection, if we're on the pier, onboard replenishments at sea, got to inspect those within 48 months, and then medical departments, make sure they're getting in there um, in that storeroom and inspecting it at least monthly. So when we find an infestation for of stored product pest, uh, we've got certain reporting procedures. First thing we're going to do is fill out the DD-1222. Your DD-1222, that's your request for results of test. You're going to fill that form out, right, and you're going to send it either to the responsible Navy Environmental Preventative Medicine Unit or to the Navy Envir or Entomology Entomology Center of Excellence, the NICE. Um, you're going to send at least two specimens, and we got to preserve those specimens in 70% ethyl alcohol, okay? Two specimens in ethyl alcohol, and if you don't have ethyl alcohol, you can use rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, okay? Um, except for moths. Moths, we're only going to we're going to submit those guys in dry vials without any alcohol. We want to make sure we don't use any cotton on them uh, as well because the cotton fibers get stuck in, uh, in the specimen and start to make it difficult to identify it, okay? So two specimens, right? We put them in 70% ethyl alcohol unless we're talking moss moss gets stored dry in vials segregation of infested commodities so if you got your commodities that got stored product pests in them right and we discover that in the storeroom we got to separate them we got to separate them from the other substances right and we got to put them in cold storage um Items with the infestation below the specified levels, these guys can be placed in the freezer for three days. So you got to remember your specified levels, right? With our, our normal stored product pest, seven or more, the lot's no good. Seven or more uh, pests or larvae per pound. With our tribolium, right, our flower beetles, we only go up to three. Three or more, it's no good. And then, of course, the domestic beetles, we won't even take one of those guys. But if we're below that infestation level on any of those stored product pests, we could put it in the freezer for three days. Um, this will kill many of the insects which will then be sifted out of the food. We'll go through the food and, you know, filter them on out. Um, freezing infestation food materials for a minimum of two weeks, that'll kill everything, right? That'll kill the larva. That'll kill, the, you know, living insects. That should take care of anything. Let's do another quick review. 
Within how many hours should onboard inspections of replenishments be conducted? Within how many hours should onboard inspections of replenishments be conducted? We got to get that done within 48 hours. 48 hours. How often should medical department personnel inspect storerooms? How often should medical department personnel inspect storerooms? We should do that at least monthly. What form is used to report and identify stored product pest? What form is used to report and identify stored product pest? That's your DD-1222, the request for and results of test. Where is the DD-1222 sent? Once you've filled out your DD-1222, where are you going to send it? You're going to send it to the Navy Environmental Preventative Medicine Unit that's responsible for your AOR or the Navy Entomology Center of Excellence. Uh, how many specimens do you need to send? How many specimens do you need to send? You need to send two of them. Uh, with the exception of moths, how should a specimen be preserved? With the exception of moths, how do we preserve specimens? We put them in 70% ethyl alcohol, or if we don't have that, we can use isopropyl alcohol. Then how do we send moths? How do we send moths? We send them dry in vials, right? And we don't want to use any cotton. Now we got to talk about the rodents, and we'll start with the Norway rat. So the Norway rat also goes by the common rat, the brown rat, the water rat, the wharf rat, the sewer rat. Um, the diseases associated with the Norway rat include tularemia, right? We remember tularemia from biological warfare, spotted fever, and also the bubonic plague, another biological warfare agent. Um, so Norway rat, right, goes by common rat, brown rat, water rat, wharf rat, and sewer rat. It's associated with tularemia, spotted fever, and bubonic plague. Uh, its preferred foods are going to include meat or fish, uh, grains, vegetables, uh, and also fruit. Our next rodent we're going to talk about is the uh, roof rat. And the roof rat's going to go by the name either the ship rat or the black rat. Um, it also can carry bubonic plague. As a matter of fact, it was a rat responsible for the black death of the 14th century that killed a third of Europe's population. The uh, roof rat is far more common on ships than the Norway rat. Okay, so this is the one we'll find on ships. But don't remember that the Norway rat also goes by the name common rat so don't mix that up norway rat also goes by the name common rat but your roof rat is more common on navy ships um, its preferred foods are going to include uh, seeds cereal vegetables and fruit and it's also been known to subsist on leather right it can eat chocolate and it can even eat weaker members of its own kind okay the roof rat more common on ships the norway rat goes by the name the common rat Rat guards, rat guards. So um, uh, when we're in the pier, especially when we're in uh, places that are in, that carry the bubonic plague, we got to have rat guards on our lines. Um, they got to be at least 36 inches, right? Uh, they got to have a 36 inch minimum outside diameter, so we got to be 36 inches across. Um, they got to have a cone angle of 30 degrees, 36 inches with a cone angle of 30 degrees. They got to be made out of 18 gauge steel or aluminum. They got to be at least six feet from the pier, right? We got to be at least six feet from the pier and we've got to be greater than two feet from the ship. Um, if we got two lines that are in close proximity, we can either put both of the lines through one single rat guard or we got to make sure that the rat guards are side by side. We don't want, uh, like if we're looking at the picture here, we don't want like the rat guard like way down here and then this one staying up here. The idea is we don't want the rat to go be able to go boom and jump over, okay? So two lines in close proximity, either put them, put them both through the same rat guard or put your rat guards side by side. Okay, so which of the two rats discussed in the manual is more common on ships? We said that the roof rat. The roof rat's more common on ships. Which of the two rats discussed is known as the common rat? The common rat is your Norway rat. Uh, what, uh, what are other names for your roof rat? What are some other names for your roof rat? That's going to include the ship rat and the black rat. Uh, which rat is associated with tularemia? Which of the rats is associated with tularemia? That's your Norway rat. What should the minimum cone di or the minimum diameter of the rat guard be? Excuse me. What should the minimum diameter of a rat guard be? Our rat guard's got to be at least 36 inches. Uh, what should the cone angle be? Our cone angle should be 30 degrees. Uh, how far do they need to be from the pier? How far should a rat guard be from the pier? Uh, six feet. How far should they be from the ship? A rat guard's got to be at least two feet away from the ship. 
All right, that concludes this uh, presentation on Chapter 2 from your Shipboard Pest Control man uh, Manual. Like always, you know, I hope this helps and keep studying.